Eric, what are some of the key trends that you're seeing at this year's CTI show? Sure. We see two major trends walking the floor out in CTIA and talking with uh, many of the vendors that are here. Um, The first is really around this uh, evolution towards voice over LTE. Um, So certainly things like IMS, the IP multimedia subsystem, um, is important towards making that happen. And we're seeing instances uh, under the auspices of IPX services, the idea of IMS hubs being installed into key locations where voice traffic is being exchanged, but that voice traffic needs to find a way to get onto IP networks. And so uh, for Equinix in particular, we find this very interesting because of our concentration of IP networks inside our data center, plus uh, traditional PSTN networks. So IMS as a transition and also as a staging towards more advanced communication functions uh, as things are moving more towards RCS type uh, messaging. And uh, that particular trend is really uh, a global phenomena. The need to distribute that voice and packetized call on a more regional basis to ensure things like jitter reduction, uh, to ensure that round trip latency is kept to a minimum. Um, That is certainly one of the bigger trends we're seeing happening on the voice side of the wireless business. And uh, uh, you mentioned earlier uh, this notion of um, um, uh, kind of multi-tenancy environments. Can you talk a little bit about that as well? Absolutely. Um, When you look at the mobile services that are being rolled out today, um, particularly kind of from a a B2B standpoint, um, this notion of multi-tenancy or cloud or hosted applications, you know, this idea of taking a service and distributing it into carrier environments and and replicating that multiple times um, can become rather inefficient and it can become very costly. So embracing a multi-tenant architecture or a cloud architecture requires being able to get to as many of the players you're trying to sell to um, from these aggregated locations. So um, the other trend that we're seeing happening is this move towards the hosted model. And and that desire to move to the hosted model really requires a good architecture that allows you to directly access your B2B channel, um, your customer groups, and to ensure the uptime of the application, which in many cases is mission critical from an OSS, BSS standpoint, uh, particularly for some of the the mobile carriers, uh, this is revenue generating and it is mission critical to their business. So ensuring that they have the best connectivity possible into their customer environment, whether that's actually the packet core of the network or back-end signaling systems, um, is we're finding and and talking to people on the floor, it is top of mind for them today. And how will that impact your business model? Well, the nice thing about the carrier neutral data center and Equinix in particular, um, because so many of the carriers use our facilities today to um, communicate with one another, to exchange traffic between networks, we become a very logical point um, to meet those carriers. And so what's essentially happening is you see a trend now where uh, these companies are embracing the architecture that the telecommunications companies have been using for a long time. Um, And that's what Equinix is actually doing and educating a number of the OSS, BSS, and service enabler uh, ecosystem partners about how they can uh, tap into that existing interconnection uh, network within data centers. And Eric, how's that changed in your distribution channels? Uh, you mentioned BSS, OSS, and some kind of new players into the market. How's it changed in the way you go to market with your product? Well, you know, it certainly requires us to uh, learn a new ver- vernacular and, and communicate our value proposition to them well. Um, being at shows like CTIA um, are imperative towards our being able to get that communication out. And what it certainly does is it opens up new horizons for um, companies that we just, quite frankly, haven't been doing business with in the past. Um, And the model fits very well. And and this is something that we're going to continue to be out evangelizing because ultimately this idea of hubbing um, is is one of the most efficient architectures we've seen. We've seen the Internet embrace this architecture. Internet architecture is based on this hubbing model. And ultimately, as things are moving more data-centric, it's just a natural evolution of, of the overall architecture. Great. Well, thanks for your time this morning.